All right, everyone. Uh, I decided to do another weekend thing. Uh, I've just popped into the office. Uh, I believe in the help channel for CSEU3. We were talking about the idea of doing the making change, but using some sort of caching or memoization way of doing it. So I decided to do a quick um, live code of refactoring the solution we came up with yesterday to include some sort of a memoization. What I'm going to probably do is use like a dictionary and so as a cache to hold the stuff and add a little bit and refactor the code a little bit to clean it up and make it how I want it to go. Uh, it may actually make it a little bit clearer to people who are actually looking at the code yesterday. So let's uh, just share screen and we'll get started. So this is the original making change, what we did. We had our base cases, then we checked for denominations and whatever, and then we had our recursive case, which split it down into two bits, which is great, and it, it works, but it's a little bit slow. Um, so if I was to, let's say, I run the Python making change thing, let's let it do its thing, wait for a bit, and boom, about three minutes that was. So let's, let's clear the screen a bit so we can kind of, Let's do the making change thing again, just to give a nice clear sort of amount of time. So we ran two tests, got about four minutes, three minutes, four minutes, sort of area. Uh, I mean, not minutes, seconds. About four seconds to run those tests. So I think we can do better. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code, bring it down here, and then let's comment out the original, just like that. Now let's think of what we want to do. Here we've got our amount, we've got our denominations. Now all I want to add is like a cache to, or a cache to hold stuff. We can instantiate a new dictionary. So we've got our empty dictionary here to use as cache. Now we've got our normal base cases, nothing's going to change there. But what I'd like to do is add a case like a, a memoization case before the recursive case. And that's just going to be basically if there exists something in the cache, then return it basically. So, so if we hold um, in the dictionary amount, and the length of the denominations. But basically, if, if it's been asked before, then it must be in the cache. And if it is, so in cache.keys, so if that exists as a key, then we're going to return what it ends up at. You know what I mean? This is what it's storing sort of thing. So, and the way I will return it will return the cache at the key of amount uh, with the length <coughs> of denominations. And that's what we're doing. We're just using that key and entering into the cache to find out what the result was. Okay. And we're going to be building that result as we go if it's not in the cache. So otherwise we're going to do a recursive cache. Now this is a little bit of a different recursive cache I think I want to do because at the moment this current recursive cache requires two calls which I believe we could do better. So instead of doing two calls, we're gonna just loop over each of the denominations and literally do a check whether it's in the cache. If it is, then we'll do it. It locks out, kind of move forward. So instead of returning this, let's, let's comment that out. So it's the old one. Let's say, otherwise what we'll do is we'll say, how many ways are there to make the thing? So ways, to make change. So how many ways are there? We'll start off with a zero and we're gonna to add to this and build it up. Let's move that down there out of the way a bit. So the idea here is gonna to be to loop over all the denominations and set each of the coins to the denomination, then check whether the coin is greater than the amount. If it is, we don't wanna do anything. We're going to just sort of continue past that iteration of the loop. 
Otherwise, we want to set like a result to a recursive call of making change. So this is where our recursive call is going to happen. So let's do that. Let's say for i in the length of denominations. Sorry, in the range of length of denominations, because we want a range based loop. Don't we? So we're going to do that. So we're going to loop over all of the different denominations. Then we're going to set the actual coin equal to whichever the coin is. So denominations at i. Once we've done that, we'll check whether the coin is greater than the actual amount that we put in in the first place. So if coin is greater than amount, if it is, we'll just continue. I'll just sort of like move on to the next coin, basically. Otherwise, we're going to do set up a result. So let's say our result is going to be equal to a call to making change. This time, it'll be the amount minus the coin that was used with the denominations from our current index to the end of the denomination. So basically, if we're, we're on the first one, then we're missing out the, first, uh, the zeroth one. If we're on the second one, we're missing out the zeroth and first one. And it's just going to move through in that way through the loop. That's what we're indexing using a range based loop. While that's doing that, we also want to send over the cache so that it keeps track of the actual cache. So now what we do is we check whether the result is greater than zero. Because if it's greater than zero, then we can we have another way to make um, change. So what we do is we say if the result is greater than zero, then what we want to do is add, uh, add the actual result to the ways to making change. So plus equals result. So that's that's basically the loop stuff. So after we finish the loop, we also want to add the um, we actually want to add it to the cache. So we want to add the ways to make and change the cache because based on that, it wasn't in the cache. So otherwise it would have just done that. So because we've had to go through all this, we now know that we need to add it to the cache. So to do so, we'll just set the cache or cache or whatever, you know, our memoization uh, holder. If you like to the same thing that we started with. So amount, comma, the length of the denominations. And then we'll say, okay, we wanna set that to the ways in which we can make change. Then we can just return the ways to make change. So we'll return it. So based on this now, we've, we've added the ability to cache stuff and memoize it. If it's already in the cache, it'll just return it from the cache. If not, it will run the recursive call and then add it to the cache and return it. So that the next time it's called with the same sort of problem, it's already in the cache. So it doesn't have to repeat those steps over and over again. So it's a lot more dry. So we can get rid of this return statement, which was for the old one. And I believe that's a fairly workable caching system. So let's let's make sure it still works and see the timing difference. So we've got four minutes, uh, four seconds for that one. Let's see how long with caching. Uh, 0 0.009 of a second. Uh, there's no attribute key, attribute error. No, just ignore that. It's just, um, oh, I'll put key instead of keys. That actually would break after a few tries. So there we go. Bit of a typo, but sorted. It was keys, not key. Okay, so let's save that. So that was basically. It's now like it's going to be like an order of magnitude smaller. You know what I mean? It's hundred times faster at the moment. Uh, it's worst one that we've had so far. So it's hundred times faster so far. More than a hundred times faster. Far more than 100 times faster. Yeah, it's, far, it's far more than 100 times. We're talking like 
on the order of about 400 times faster. Does that make sense? I mean, that, that's quite a bit of a jump, really. But yeah, but notice how it, it just speeds up the, the overall thing by a ridiculous order, order of magnitude. Right, that's been a bit longer than I was expecting, but it's, I guess we kind of got the overall stuff sorted. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Making change with memoization. And push that in the repo. Okay, that's done. Well, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, everyone, uh, that took a little bit of time, but I thought it was worthwhile talking about and showing the ways of refactoring to utilize memoization in a general purpose um, application. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and um, I'll see you in another video.